Marco Kempt. Raise your hand if your name is Marco in the house. Somebody shake his hand. So good to have you in the house. Brother Marco from Germany. Brother Robin. Okay, Bartinger, also from our Brother Robin, wave your hand. Wave your hand, Robin. Brother Robin. Somebody shake his hand, praise God. And I see somebody here from, is this France? All right, somebody from France, and his name is Yannick. Yannick or Yannick? All right, so he's from France. I can't speak French, so I gotta stick to English. The Lord bless you, so good to have you. Did somebody shake his hand already? Put your hands together for our visitors, our international visitors in the house. Praise God. It's not about uh, your status in terms of your job or where you come from, but one of the things that offers us an opportunity to be completely blessed uh, is our obedience uh, to the word of God. Are you with me, somebody? Praise God. And uh, I always told the church that when it comes to God and we assess because as human beings we have the ability we love to reason as intellectuals we love to reason things out and when we reason things out then we can make an assessment
assessment or a judgment as to the direction that we might go in and after we assess the situation if it seems feasible and we understand it then we might move on to it but then if we assess the situation and it seems as if it doesn't make any sense then we won't move on to it because it is a risk that we might not want to take if somebody is going to open a business they are going to tell you firstly that you need to make sure that the business or the field that you're going in is something that is feasible and something that can gain customers or clients and if you're going to go into a field which nobody around you is interested in then you're setting yourself up to fail but but, but then the, the God comes in and he messes up the logic of mankind God comes in and he messes up our thought process because God comes in and what he tells us to do is completely nonsense when it comes to the intellect of mankind because Jesus at the wedding his mother knew what he was capable of and so she said to the disciples whatsoever he tells you to do then you've got to do it you see the blessing is truly in the obedience of God's word and God's word does not always come straightforward but one has just got to simply obey the word because here comes Jesus look at the disciples and he did not take money out of the purse and give it to them and told them to go to the market and get some additional wine but Jesus comes and he throws in a curveball because he said get some buckets get some pots and fill it with water oh God can somebody come with me to swap it God has a way of just messing up our logics Elijah said bait me a cake first according to the laws of logics we would have needed to tell that man you must be crazy you must be mad I just told you that I'm about to bake a cake one cake and I and my son are gonna eat and die so here comes the man of God and says bake me a cake first and whatever is left then you can have that can I talk to somebody but when you obey God's word it's not in consideration of how it might sound it might sound crazy but it is important for us to do what God says your life can be saved if you obey God's word your house can be blessed if you obey God's word Noah wasn't saved because he was a goody two shoes Noah wasn't saved because he was holier than thou but Noah was saved because he was crazy enough to obey an instruction that was man built an ark upon dry land built an ark where there was no river where there was no ocean build an ark upon dry land one needs to understand to be blessed you've got to be obedient and so Jesus said if any man will follow me let him fast deny himself take up your burdens take up your cross and follow me your blessing is in your obedience somebody open up your mouth and magnify the Lord you see sin has a way of coming in and what sin does it lingers and it begins to tear away of who you are the Bible said that when lust is conceived it brings forth sin and when sin is conceived it brings 
footsteps are you with me somebody so Naaman was in a position where he needed some help Naaman was in a position where his money was useless Naaman was in a position where his friend the king was useless can I talk to somebody have you ever been in a situation where you needed somebody to help you and they might pull some strings and help you but then something comes up that nobody who you call is able to step in nobody who you talk to is able to put a helping hand and so was Naaman he found himself in a position where he needed help but watch this his help came from the most unlikely of places can I talk to somebody up in this building you see there are those of you people don't know your name they don't know about you you have gift and talents but nobody recognizes nobody knows what's on the inside you can sing like whoa can preach like whoa but nobody even knows your first or your last name can I talk to those who are not recognized watch this this young girl the Bible will tell us her name she was not even recognized enough to be given her name but it was this insignificant it was this little girl who was held as captive Oh uh, God can I talk to somebody uh, Your name uh, Might not be called uh, Your name uh, Might not be extolled uh, But God's got you uh, For a purpose uh, God's got you uh, For such a time uh, As this Somebody open your mouth and give God glory Somebody open your mouth and give God breath your name might not be known I might be nameless but I got a purpose I might be nameless but I got a calling I might be nameless but I'm here to bless watch this this young girl teaches us all the lesson because she was not there in Naaman's house willingly are you with me somebody she was a captive she was a slave she within herself teach the church today what it means to be a Christian this young girl didn't have the Holy Ghost but she understands what it means to be Christ like nowadays Christian when them see the leprosy come upon brother Naaman someone has a yes job whip him yes job whip him but this young girl she had compassion even though Naaman was her chapter she had the mind of Christ and you with me somebody there's some people who are nameless but they serve a great purpose do you all know how Jacob or Joseph rather do you all know how Joseph became Oh God, the second in charge in Egypt. If I was teaching, I would ask you to tell me. But it's still a question. Do you all know how Joseph became the second in charge? Somebody might say, well, it was because of Pharaoh. You got it wrong. Somebody might say, well, it was because of the baker. You got it wrong. Somebody might say, well, it's because of the jailer. Well, you got it wrong. Somebody might say, well, it's because of Potiphar or his wife. You still got it wrong. Somebody might say, well, it's because of the Ishmaelites that sold him into Egypt. You still got it wrong. 
Somebody might say it's because of his brothers. Because of his brothers didn't take him and put him into that pit that none of that would happen. But you still got it wrong. The word said, as Joseph set out to find his brothers, he couldn't find them. He had no clue as to where they were. I know would be the time that Joseph would say, I can't find them. So let me go back home to my father. If Joseph had gone back home, then nothing that happened in his life would not have happened but as Joseph was on his way looking for his brothers the word said a man oh God the word said a man he didn't give his name first not last he didn't tell where he came from he didn't tell his profession it said a man told Joseph where his brothers were and because Joseph listened to the man he found his brothers can I tell somebody don't worry if your name the car don't worry if your name the big up God knows who you are and you serve a purpose for you're in the kingdom for such a time as this somebody will be the mouth and magnify the Lord might not come in a way that you anticipate or expect. They have a saying that looks are deceiving. There are many of you today who could have been married a long time ago. But the brother man of God said, Ah, boy, he never looked too good according to how you have it in your book. Yes, man, you know your list. You know your list. You know your list. And a woman may talk to ladies then. No, 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 this. We always talk about the list. You see, but God has a way of messing up our list. Watch this. Help me out, Sister Kim. Just bear with me. Come with me. Yes, sir. So from my office, nice little package. Oh, put it right there. I know what I did that I'm going to get no prestigious name and call it restroom. Oh, I did tie it. Put it right over here. So, before us, we have a choice. One came from my office. In the smell nice, is it? My God. Package and look good. But then out of the toilet. God, I'm about watch it. No. The task for you is, there is a blessing, but choose. Now, look before you. One looks exquisite. And I would encourage you to choose what look good. According to man's logic. Yes. Yes. But again, God has a way. God has a way of messing things up. So my dear, you have an option now. Open that anything we're finding in the ticket. Open this. Anything where you find in the ticket, the decision, the choice is yours. Choose. Yeah. 
Wrong gun. It might not look good from the outside, but what's ever the inside of it? The valuable. What up your blessing, man? Hold it up. Hold it up, man. What up your blessing? I say it might not look good, but your blessing is in your obedience. Stand up on your feet, somebody. Stand up on your feet. Your blessing. It's in your obedience. Take out your turn of missing to a message. How the messenger arrived. Committed to the journey so me now go backslide. Looking through the spirit and the physical eyes. Who to God me testify. Know me at the work of God and me boss. My whole life he endured. Take me from the mud and put me in a A class. A class.